Greetings, brothers and sisters. Today I'd like to talk to you about from the gospel in the stars, how God made the stars on a YouTube video. In Job chapter 38, verse four, it says, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you understand. Who laid the measures of it, if you know? Or who, measure, who laid a line on it, a ruler on it? What are the foundations fastened to? And who laid the cornerstone? When the morning songs, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Of course, when he's talking about sons of God there, he was talking about the angels. Job couldn't answer that question. He wasn't there. He doesn't know how God created the foundation of the earth. But God was showing him what he didn't know. And there wasn't any Bible for Job to study, so he didn't know. In Genesis, it tells us, on the third day, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, who seeded in himself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Now that's right before on the fourth day, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so, and God made two great lights, the greater light, that's the sun to rule the day and the lesser light, that's the moon to rule the night, he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Now that's, a, that's how God made the stars. But the two things are connected, the, the stars and the seed. Let's talk about the seed. All seeds of a certain thing, like all grass seeds of a certain kind of grass are the same. Even though it's been all of these thousands or, or millions or however many years, the seed is still the same. It's the same grass. Same thing with the apple or the peach. Over all these years, it's still the same. But every seed is different. Because when you go to check in the DNA, it's all different. Maybe just a little bit. It's just a very, like, 0.4 or 0.1% different. But it's got a little bit of difference. And that's how seed is. Now, I want to talk about seed because everything God made... He made in a seed that reproduces itself. Even the animals, even us, people, were of a seed because that's how God does things because he is a God of blessing and multiplying. Now, the seed has, of the grass, it covers the earth. We have all of these things, these weeds and everything, they cover the earth. 
They just multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. Some of them die. They die, but they keep on multiplying. They keep on multiplying. Well, it's the same way with the stars. You can take a Hubble telescope or a high-powered telescope, and as far as you can see, new galaxies and stars are being created. And all this came from that one word that he spoke on the fourth day. And for the, 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 seed, the seeds of the grass and the herbs and the plants, on the third day, but that one word that was spoken. And I want to share from something from Colossians chapter 1 when he's talking about Jesus. It says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him, Jesus Christ and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist all things consist of jesus christ everything everything that was made he made it god made jesus first and he used jesus to create everything else by the word. Jesus is the word. He's in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That was Jesus. And when God spoke, he spoke Jesus. And everything that was made was made by him and by him all things consist consist is continued to exist i want, want you to note something really really interesting if you take a an electron microscope I mean i've looked in them i've seen them and you look down and you see the atomic structure of everything, what you're going to see, you're going to see these electrons that are orbiting around these protons. It goes around and around in a circle. And when you look down to tiny, 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 you get the same view as when you look up into the stars, the great big stars up there. And there's a little force that pulls all of these things together in the atom, in your life, and in the stars. And that thing that pulls it all together is what they consist of. And that is Jesus. Now, if you want to know more about blessing and multiplying, well, before we get there, I want to talk about the hummingbird because people like to, to say uh, the Bible is not scientific. Well, look at the hummingbird, and scientists will tell you that there is no possible way that the hummingbird can fly because its wings, it just doesn't have the strength and the wingspan to keep itself up. Well, when they try to tell you that science proves there's no God, you need to tell them about the hunting hummingbird and ask them how the hummingbird can fly. Because they can't tell you. Smart as they are, they can't tell you. But it does, and it has been doing all of these thousands or however many years that, that we've had life on the earth, that hummingbird's been flying around, making fools of people that think they know it all. Now, 
If you want to know more about blessing and multiplying, I talk a lot about that in my new book, Melchizedek's Order. Consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of his spoils. Hebrews 7, 4. Without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. But we have many things to say about him, hard to be uttered because you are dull of hearing. Mentioned only twice in the Old Testament, he is a enigma is an enigma whom Abram met after the battle of the kings. He's mentioned in Psalms, indicating a continuing priesthood. The book of Hebrews bestows him unequal status, ascribing him immortality. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. He has a continuing priesthood. The ministry of Melchizedek provides the hope of life and salvation. Start digging the wells of grace to find eternal life. God commanded a blessing through Melchizedek, even eternal life. It's an order, but very few are standing in line to receive that order to receive eternal life. Are you ready to hear the rest? Mel. Kedzidek's order. It's a dispensation of grace. God pouring out his grace. So you should read the book. Thank you.